All right, guys, you're tuning in to Leno Pod, the Leno Prod podcast. This is episode nine, featuring Mark Pico. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't have any sound effects, no air horn, no none of that. But uh, thanks for being uh, a guest. For this is actually probably gonna be the last episode for this first quote unquote season. Like, um, sure. I remember I did like a, a lot of them, like seven or eight of them. That's not really a lot, but I did like seven or eight of them two years ago, back when I was a junior. And then now I decided to bring it back. I feel like even during these times during quarantine, even though we don't have an actual setup, I feel like the whole uh, webcam, Skype call, whatever, Zoom chat, I feel like it still works. And yeah, thank you for being <laughs> the last guest. I think for this season. Totally. I think the second season, I might change a few things up. I might have a co-host. I won't say who it is yet, but I have somebody in mind. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just feel free to always be uh, another guest. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't limit it to one time if you want to come sure, back. Sure, You know? But anyways, yeah, we were uh, we were talking about it's just, like, your new updates to your, to your room, including your didgeridoo, like... <laughs> I don't know if you want to explain to people what that is. I'm pretty sure people don't know. Like, what what is that? What what is that long pipe yeah, so instrument thing up there? I'll I've move got my screen. A, this is a I don't know if it's a painting. I think it's just a picture of some. You can't quite see that clearly, but it's some lions uh, hanging out by a waterfall. Which is I don't believe lions naturally do that. <laughs> um, but uh, my fiance's neighbor had it and she didn't want it anymore and then gave it to my fiance's family and they're like well we certainly don't want it and then i love all things tacky so i took it <laughs> it's got a big giant gold frame around it and it lights up and the waterfall even moves like this oh my and, gosh uh, but above that there is an instrument made of bamboo and it's called a, did a didgeridoo and um i'm a, I'm a musician and um i have a friend named aaron who's also a songwriter his name is uh, aaron oswald and uh, I've been friends with him for probably like half my life. And I am known amongst my peers as uh, someone who has like too many skills. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I, I, or at least too many interests. I, um, I play like at least 10 different instruments, unless you include like a bunch of little easy things like shakers and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, one day as like a joke, he was... For my birthday, he bought me a didgeridoo, that one, as like a joke. And he was like, learn this, asshole. And and then I did. And I took about uh, th uh, three weeks on YouTube just kind of looking at like guys like from the bush. Be like, yeah, you got to blow into this, yeah. And you do like that, yeah. And like all this kind of thing. And uh, it, was, it was fun. And I, I, I taught myself how to play didge. And I've since I've had two didgeridoo gigs professionally. I've never meant to pursue it, but my first didgeridoo gig was for Buzz Aldrin, like wow. the first, first guy on the moon, the second guy on the moon, or something like that. And I played at his birthday party at the uh, mansion of this, the owner of Humex, which is a massive uh, juice company in Mexico, uh, here in Beverly Hills. Yeah, they make and the then, mango juice thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was, <laughs> it was really cool because they just wanted me to stand by the doorway and blow for like the party, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Once they realized that the didgeridoo kind of couldn't blend with the violins and all the other musicians they had, they're like, yeah, just just play for like an hour or two, and then I got I got paid the same, but they just let me kind of hang out for the rest of the time. Dude, that's tight, man. Wait, where does that instrument come from again? Like, it's from Australia. Australian, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be one of the oldest instruments uh, ever made. Um, yeah, because it's so simple. It's just it's just a tube. It's like a it's any. It's like the. It's like the. Uh, predecessor to any trumpet horn or horn instrument that you have to use an embouchure and a buzzing like a right, like right. That, that's how you play any of those kind of embouchure instruments hmm. so anybody yeah. that's like you know plays trumpet or trombone or you know the, wait the sax count no that uses a reed right no, yeah sax, sax they put their mouth on top of the thing they go i don't know what they do actually right <laughs> that's know. the only like i, I think it, they, yeah. they tick with their tongue like this and you go eh, 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 eh. <laughs> And then music comes out. <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember I took only one, like, I was part of band in, um, I don't think a lot of people know about this because I never pursued it. I think it was middle school, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was middle school. I went to Van Nuys, and you either, for your elective, you could do computer class, like, I, I don't know, just 
learn the basics of not the basics but a bunch of different stuff about computers or you can join band right so i actually uh -huh. did for a little bit for like a month or two and then they assigned me the alto sax and mm. i was, was like that? dude that was one of the hardest things i didn't even get far with it man like i just <laughs> i was just not motivated i was not disciplined enough to like learn that instrument but so i ended up switching i was like yeah, i'd rather play computer games and now mm. here we are like both making music I mean, like, I learned a little bit of drums at USC and then a little bit of singing, a little bit of keys, but, like, I still don't claim I could, like, play, a, like, a quote-unquote physical instrument, but, man, like, how did, I mean, you, you play, like, you said, like, ten, right? Like, do you feel like once you have one or, or two, like, they're all just related? I mean, you also have perfect pitch, too, which I think helps. <laughs> Like, that, or that, no. that does actually, it does. But um, your question was, uh, you know, what was, what was exactly the question? How do, you, how do like, you pick up so much? I mean, I mean, like, you've been making music for a long time, so I feel like, uh -huh. of course, practice, but... It, it's practice, but um, I, mean, I, I, I probably can't give a, a blanket answer, but what I can say for myself is a lot of it was, was, was the excitement and the desire mm. for exploration through music. It wasn't about, oh, like... Oh, it would be really impressive if I know a lot of instruments. Right. It wasn't about, oh, it'd be super cool if I knew a lot of instruments. Or, or like, I wasn't actually trying to aim to accomplish something by learning a bunch of instruments. It was more like I kept getting sidetracked by my own interests. <laughs> so, I, um, I, I've been singing since I was little and, and dancing next to the CD player and all that kind of thing. Um, and then I was like, I think the first time I was ever like, whoa, I need to learn guitar, other than, you know, watching an incredible, you know, we had DVDs and videos of, like, guitar gods and all that kind of thing growing up, but, like, I watched my cousin, Mark, he's got the same name, Nice. he's two years older than me, um, kind of what you imagine of, like, the, like, you know, early 2000s Mexican kid, like, the long hair <laughs> and, like, the black shirts and skateboarding and playing heavy metal on guitar, and, uh, <laughs> And I thought he was the coolest thing ever. And so I thought, and he could shred. And I was like, oh, that is so cool. And so I had to kind of start picking up guitar for myself and start learning your chords and all the basic stuff. I didn't mind the process, which is, I think was another good thing. Because I feel like a lot of people get um, discouraged by the process. Whenever they want to learn, whether it's for fun or for kind of profession, you know. Like, they go, oh, like, I wish I could play dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig or whatever it is you're trying to play, you know, and you, you go, why do I have to learn, like, bum, 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 bum? That's a C chord. Like, a lot of people, like, how to get this, like, oh, this is taking forever. And um, I remember I once had a friend ask me, like, hey, I have this opportunity to, like, whatever, whatever, I don't remember. And he was like, but I need to learn, I need to know how to, like, play the drums for this thing. Like, any way that I could, like, learn the drums in, like, two weeks. And I was like, I mean, uh, and you can practice a lot, like, and he's like, okay, okay, but, you know, is there, it's got to be, like, a fast way, like, is there, is there and I'm like, bro, if there was a fast way, I said, none, none of us, none of us would be doing anything, like, if they, <laughs> that's true, if there were shortcuts, yeah. man, like, everybody would be a multi-instrumentalist, yeah, no, like, that's what I'm saying, so I'm like, no, bro, like, that's literally just, you have to, you have to love it, and you have to, like, you know, dedicate yourself to it, and so I think for me, it was kind of a case of one thing led to the, to the other, like, I saw my cousin Mark play guitar, and I was like, oh, I gotta play guitar. And so I started playing guitar, and I started singing my own melodies, and then I was like, man, I wish, uh, I wish I could, like, you know, jam with myself. How can I jam? Because actually, I grew up, uh, during the time that I was starting to get really into music, I grew up uh, in a place uh, where there was only, like, I went to a really, really tiny private school. It was, like, 72 kids per grade, so, like, and I was doing this when I was like 10, 11, 12. So like mm. no one knew they wanted to be a musician at that age. No one knew what their career was going to be at that age. And I was one of a very small amount of people in this world that kind of figured that out at a very young age. And that's not better or worse. A lot of people feel like they wish they could have. I, I think everyone's got their own path. That's beautiful. Yeah. But me, I happened to know that at that age. I was like, well, I got no one to jam with because no one wants to be a musician. <laughs> So I uh, I had saved up some money, I think, from, like, I don't know, allowance or doing chores or something. I right, bought right. a little machine. Nice. And I was like, well, I'm, I don't have a bass. And I feel like I'm missing bass. And I, I have a drum machine from one of my old pedal boards. I had, like, a drum machine. So I, like, I can use that, but I don't have a bass. So nice. I was like, ah, it's got to be, like, easy guitar, right? And then I, I bought a bass. I started playing bass. And 
I was like, oh, I'll kind of figure it out. And and then after that, you know, my mom was like, oh, if you want to be a professional musician, all musicians know how to play keyboards. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> the worst. And then so I started learning keyboards. And so kind of one thing kept leading to the other. And people would usually buy me, you know, you know smaller, cheaper instruments, like a little mandolin or a little ukulele or something like that. To be like, hey, why don't you figure this out? And they kind of just... I just I just kept having more fun. For me, it's always been about the fun. I kept having more fun, so that's why I keep collecting instruments and learning instruments and recording instruments. Dude, that all makes sense now. Now that I think about it, because like the driving force is internal and not external. I feel oh like yeah. That you're, for you're, me, it's so much fun. Yeah, you're like for you, like not only is it fun at the moment, but it's like a continuous thing. Like it constantly reinforces you and then. Uh, you see an interest, you see someone else play, your friend gives you a, a didgeridoo as a random gift, as a joke, and yeah. then you pick up interest, like, that That all makes sense now. I guess, I don't, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm not that interested in learning some instruments. It'd be cool from like a, from like a, obje- like objective, dry, like, yeah, like skill, like, yeah, like asset. It would be cool, but it's maybe not as cool in your heart. You know? Exactly, I mean, that's how I learned, like, beats, like, I just, like, we, we, we both, that's um, you, right? yeah, like, that spoke to me, and when I would see, like, on YouTube, just clips of DJ Premier, Ninth Wonder, Jay Dilla, Alchemist, with the NPCs, and, like, chopping the samples, I was like, oh, shoot, I could do this in a digital program, because I couldn't afford an NPC, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know how to play an instrument, and I could put drums and melodies together, I was like, all right, I think I found something. Exactly. Yeah, and, like, I, I think... What what I admire about you was like I remember that first I, I forgot where we were going but that was the first time I think I rode in your car, and that's when I figured out like that you were also a Jay Dilla fan and I, I haven't yeah. met somebody that was like a well I'm not a huge Jay Dilla fan even though I do draw a lot of influence from him early on um, I do recognize him as one of the goats for sure at least in mm-hmm. hip hop production um, but you you were definitely like so into him and you, you played me the actual cds that you had and you were yeah. you were, you were t- explaining to me how crisp the drums sounded on the cd version versus yeah, other yeah, versions I, uh, I forgot which jd project was that and then now you got like the record right there like that you were telling me that was rare yeah. from 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 japan i'm like mm. that's tight and i remember i think you came to my dorm or, or something or no no i i went to your place this exact room actually in in uh the 66 and then i brought my laptop and then i think you chopped the sample and i was like damn that was quick like because like to me i i was introduced to you as like someone that plays guitar and keyboard and sings mm-hmm. but then when i saw that i was like damn like Mark, like, man, anything you touch, bro, like... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my man. And again, I, I feel like because you, you your love and interest is there for Jay Dilla and, like, hip-hop and, and all that, like, it, it comes natural to you almost because, like, you just love it. That it, You don't see it as, like, oh, this is a technical cl- uh, hill or a chore or a homework I have to do. This is, like, something that I love and I, I admire that, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Dude, like, yeah, you are going to say? Yeah. I was going to say... For me, it's it's all about the, the the love and the fun. Like even like with the you know with the instrument collecting. Like I remember I even took a uh, like a world music class in, in college, and you just you just learn about how much music exists out there that that we don't even get exposed to as as Americans on like a regular basis. Right. And and this it, it it's all so cool and it's all so different. And uh, but yeah yeah but 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 JD, uh, I've always been a real big fan. Like I've I've got a uh, got a couple of his CDs stuff that that's like not out on like Spotify, mm-hmm. and uh, I've got a couple records and this is one of them. This one's from I was telling you earlier. This is from uh, it's from Japan. This is I think one of three thousand. Um, this Sorry. is uh, like uh, like Electric Blue or something. Oh Real man, pretty. that's beautiful, dude. Yeah. And uh, oh, so yeah, he he was the first. Well, actually, there's a lot of records that are now blue. Now I think about it. I have a friend that's like yeah. into vinyl and he listens to a lot of pop punk and there's like a pop punk record that's blue. I think the Kanye Jesus is King one recently. Oh yeah, that's a blue, that, that, that blue record. Yeah. That's tight. Have you ever like um, thought of, or maybe you do have stuff in the vault, like like you ever, I, I know you chop samples, but like have you ever thought of like putting out a project like that or, because I know um, on one of your, uh, and you can talk more about this, your the live streams that you do um, weekly. 
um, I heard that somebody asked like what your favorite genre of music is, right? Or, or era, and you mentioned the 80s. And I was uh-huh. like, dude, like that's, that's what got me into music first too. Like my parents were all about 80s music. Um, yeah. How, so uh, are you like um, thinking about for future projects to do stuff that's like hip hop production or you're trying to do other stuff for now? And if, it, if so, like explain more about that. Or you could talk more about the live streams too, and because I always wanted yeah. to know like what your purpose was for that. Um, you had the word healing in in your live streams, right? Or, yeah. So okay. the live stream is called Musical Healing, um, and so I started it. Oh, I think like the like the same week that they kind of started to shut down uh, Los Angeles with COVID nineteen when they said you know right. everyone's staying home now. It was kind of, it was a lot actually for me, like it was an immediate response of like, I had a whole bunch of gigs, you know, canceled as did many musicians. And I was like, oh, this is a bummer. I said, you know, I need to just play some music to get through this. Mm. And, you know, I can sit here by myself and play songs and feel better and have fun. But I figured, you know, why not live stream? Because every once in a while I would toy toy with live streaming because I used to really not do any live streaming at all. Right. Uh, just because I, I didn't find a, as much of a connection with that um, that 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 style of um, of, of, of content, mm-hmm. uh, but I just kind of went on a whim and said, you know, I don't care if anybody watches. I'm just gonna live stream it. Whoever watches in, you know, they can watch. And the whole concept was to practice healing through music. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. I mean, some people do like you know meditation and bells and right, this and right, that. Right. Some people do, you know, worship and they sing praise songs to God and all this kind of stuff. Right. And, and, and I am a Christian. I, I am, I am someone who does actually those kinds of things. Right. Um, but I, I don't think that that God made music just so we have to right. find that healing only in like spiritual music. I, right. I think there are so many things that exist in this world that are of beauty and, yeah. and 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 divine is is in them already because of their i think innate beauty so you know i agree any old stevie wonder song any old song that that makes your heart feel right i feel in a way is divine and so that was the concept was let's just play a bunch of pop songs that we all love and there is there is goodness and there is healing in being able to sing songs Times in our hey. life. <laughs> i already feel good now. there's also <laughs> there's also healing in music that has nothing to do with like you know, that's a very like, oh, let's come together and be friends kind of song. But there's, even if you want to sing like, run around, na 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 na, every party in LA. Like, if you want to sing Charlie Puth, like, there's healing in that too. Yeah. Dude, like, that, that's dope. I, I really love how um, inclusive that approach is. You know Thanks. what I mean? Because, I mean, there's definitely like all those different ways that people can uh, incorporate healing and music, but I really uh, admire that uh, that mindset of you know what connects with somebody that's not quote-unquote like deemed as like a healing type of music because like for me like i sometimes like just throwing on some like hip-hop records (laughs) that kind of could be like the lyrics can be like not like the most (laughs) healing lyrics you know what i mean (laughs) but to me i'm I'm such a producer that i hear the sonics you know what i mean i'm just like Yeah. yeah But I guess people view it differently. But I, I think from a personal level, I, I, I agree with you, man. Like, And I, I really respect, um, shout out to uh, Josh that be DJing Saturday nights <laughs> on IG. Yeah. Like, throwing Red on car those. Sounds. Yeah, Red car sounds. Red car sounds. Like, be uh, throwing on those uh, those record, those hip hop joints from, from the 2000s, yeah. 90s, and it's the 2010s. Great. Like, that, like, takes me back to a time of, like, I mean, I'm still young. I feel like I'm old saying it takes me back to a time. <laughs> like, no, it does, man. Like, I've only graduated last year, but it feels it's like a, like, college feels like a blur. Like, every time I, I like, I I've, I've was able to, like, talk to some friends from USC, catch up and see how they're doing. And whenever we talk about college, like, it, it reminds me of when I would hang out with my high school friends and we would talk about high school. I come in thinking that, ah, oh, man, like, I've heard the story a bunch of times, but, like, Sometimes it's kind of good to hear it again and be reminded yeah. of of uh, of uh, good times, not only in the present but also be thankful for the good times in the past, even if it's small things like, oh, remember this dumb joke you told me, and we all laugh together. Like, mm. uh, yeah. How how have you, I guess, uh, or have you been like catching up with some old friends that you haven't 
spoke to in a while or i mean i know a lot of people are speaking to family more right because we're just all at home like um yeah. but i'm kind of like sick and tired <laughs> to be honest i'm used to like going out so i'd be talking to a lot of my friends too not saying that i don't talk to my family anymore i'm just saying like I, I've, I've talked about almost everything with my family so it's like uh-huh. it's like I, I, i'm starting to barely starting to like finally have the courage because i used to like expect people to like hit me up right i don't know maybe it's pride or ego but now i'm trying to make a little bit more of an effort to like reach out and be like hey man how you doing like yeah definitely um for me I, i've been uh checking in my my parents go deliver food to my grandparents every week and so i haven't really wanted to go because i'm like oh man like you know the stores are crazy right now so yeah <laughs> But I'm actually I'm gonna join them uh, on Friday, and because uh, I miss my grandparents too, mm. and so I, I want to go see them and spend time with them, you know, at a distance on the other side of the lawn. Um, I've been uh, for my birthday, which passed a couple weeks ago. I had a um, a happy belated. I, oh, thank you. I, I call it a drive-by birthday, cause that that that. And so <laughs> I had all my friends come to the curb, and I invited a whole bunch of friends over. That's just so tight. Curb, and everyone yeah. stayed six feet apart. And we just like talked for like a couple hours. It was a good time. And uh, <laughs> they like yelling at each other. <laughs> I actually, went to, my neighborhood's real quiet, so okay, I'm yeah, yeah. about that. Right, right, right. right. Uh, but I've also been. If you if you need it, I can send it to you. But I, I forget how a friend of mine sent me a link to a Google Doc, which has now been updated by so many people. It's now it's a massive Google spreadsheet of like a bajillion free online games that are multiplayer. Um, oh, I've gotten one of those, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, I've been kind of whenever I want to see friends, like I actually keep been keeping quite busy. I'm about as busy, if not busier, in the pandemic, which is crazy. Dude, same here right now. <laughs> but but um, in when well, no, maybe once or twice a week, I even up to three times a week, I'm I'm calling friends just to see how my friends are doing, and I'm. And I'm inviting people to do like a you know hop on Discord or, or Zoom or whatever it is you, you choose to use, and we you know, play games together like virtual Uno or virtual Cards Against Humanity or virtual um, you know. I've done chess. a lot of code names and uh, <laughs> poker. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I I love playing uh, poker. Dude, I think um, I remember I called you one time like during my internship. Like this was like months ago. And I was like, Mark, how do you like? balance everything you know since you're doing music and and you're 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 working you're doing gigs and like how do you balance everything and i i the main thing i took from that was um you like to dedicate a good amount of hours per week with uh friends and family and i was like that really put mm-hmm. some things in perspective because for me it was all like go 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 just all music all business all careers but um the longer i mean there is like Obviously, I, I am being intentional. I am picking and choosing who I like decide to spend time with, but also, That's I guess, important. I Super guess, important. yeah, I guess before I used to overlook the value not only that my friends and family have given me, but like the value of those relationships in general. So, um, I think it's been because I've been more intentional. For me, it doesn't seem now like time wasted as I would have thought before. Now it's yeah. like this is good for my soul, and it's uh, only going to reinforce me to do better work and be even oh, be- sure. more productive. Yeah, yeah. That's a hundred percent for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I feel pretty much exactly the way you, you you're saying right now, and that's kind of what I um, kind of had figured out slash had learned from my college, because especially a person like me, I'm I was I think I was built to be a doer. Same. Um, <laughs> and and it's a blessing and a curse because we kind of live. At least in America, in 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 a doer's world. Yeah. Uh, I think there are other maybe cities within the U.S. or even other countries in the world that are, or where the culture is not so much about, you know, go go go. Right. right, uh, right. I know at least here for me in L.A. it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, and so I adapt well to, to 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 that environment, but it it can easily pull me away because there was a time, and I hope that time is leaving i i don't get that comment as much but my close friends uh whenever i i hear from other friends about what friends would say about me or yeah or if i talk to my fiance maybe they had a private conversation with a friend and yeah. and then she let me on what they say kind of thing uh, <laughs> nice, like... uh 
the only you know people would always say, "Oh, we love Mark," and da da da. And the only complaint people would have consistently about me as a person is he's just never there. He just doesn't have time. He's always working. Da 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 da. And I was thinking about you know the life I want to live, and I was thinking about you know when when am I gonna have time to make ample time mm. for the people that that matter to me mm. and that contribute to my life? And I figured. Let's get, let's get let's take a random guess. Let's say it's 40. Let's say when I'm 40, I have that time. Do I want to spend the next 15 years of my life going, going, going on my projects and having fun along the way, doing this, accomplishing this, maybe that award there, this, whatever. And when I'm 40, go, hey, guys, guess what? Next 40 years is free now. Oh, I, 40 years. How can you guys complain? <laughs> and yet, but at that point, am I going to even still be close enough with them for that to even matter to either of us. Exactly. To, to even say that. And I was thinking, I don't I don't know if, you know, realistic, of course I love them now, but if, if I don't give the people I love my time, when, when people that I thought I loved didn't give me their time, I'm like, well, they clearly don't care about me. Mm. You know, I, you don't mean to push them out, but you kind of go, well, I guess I don't need to reach out to them because they never reach out to me, and da, 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 and you kind of end up drifting apart. And right, right, right. I, I, I realize that, no, uh, I love my friends way more than that, and I, I mm. just need to actively make more time for my family and my friends. And like you said, it it's good for you as a human being. It fills your soul, and if you're looking at it purely from a work point of view, uh, first of all, that should be enough, but as a work point of view, having that you know, that re-pouring into your soul makes you way happier to work, makes you way more motivated, way more inspired, and way more creative, is what I find. Exactly. And I think, like, that was definitely one of my biggest fears, like, in terms of friendships and relationships, was, like, man, all these, like, interviews of people I look up to, like, I know they had to make a lot of sacrifices to get there, and... I know me knowing me, I'm down to make those sacrifices, but I also think like, um, or one of my hopes was like, hmm, is it selfish for me to think that I want friends that know that, you know, James is busy, but he, he's doing his thing, man. Like we still support him. And, and I, do have, I do have friends like that, which is dope, but sometimes I fear I have a, a few amount of friends where maybe it's not that, maybe it's more of like the drifting apart situation. Like, oh, he never has time for us. I guess he doesn't care about us type mm-hmm. of thing and I, I i loved having this conversation with other uh musicians or anyone that pursues like a career that's so uh demanding i feel at times of uh of like workload in general and and time uh, yeah yeah so I, I i always think like man like but but to agree what you're what you said was um it's all about i, I can only control what i can control i feel and if i look carefully and i plan it out and i and I intentionally carve more time. I could I could afford a ten minute conversation with with somebody, you know. And and then, but before I used to think like, oh no, like every single minute I need to be like doing something. But I feel like it's all about definitely all about the intent and at the long term how it's gonna make you feel. Like like you said, like I don't want to be like, let's say thirty and like Grammys and everything, with no one to celebrate that I actually care about. Then it's like, yeah. It, yeah. it was all for nothing. No. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because, and I think the the best way to uh, summarize why exactly that's not worth it. I remember one of the most life changing conversations I had was uh, I had I had really bad, um, like like diagnosed like anxiety in in college, and um, I remember I, I was going to therapy, and my therapist told me. Uh, she said, and it's it real corny, because at first I was like, eh, until I was like, oh, wait a minute. She says, we're human beings, it's not human doings. Mm. And for me, as someone who's always been a very active person, like I said, kind of built for a go, go, go environment. Right. Um, someone who constantly loves to learn this instrument and that instrument and this and learn this and do that. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm, I, I can kind of keep up with the stimuli. Um, doing is one of my great strengths and one of my great sins because mm. I can make a sin out of doing by by kind of be, becoming a slave right. to doing and thinking that I'm not worth anything if I can't do right, right. Or, or or say or I have no enjoyment in my life if I can't be constantly doing 
Right. And so she's like, you have to, you know, find, you know, your yourself in being. And uh, what's it feel like just to be? Is it enough just to be? What if you didn't do anything else for the rest of your life? Could you still love yourself kind of thing? Hmm. Uh, outside of the practicals of not having money or, you know, you <laughs> you know but, right, right, right. but just on like that psycho- uh, philosophical level, like, can you just be and are, are you okay with that? And so I, I guess that that kind of speaks to me as to why it's not worth working and accomplishing even the, the best things in the world, even making your dreams come true, if you have no one to share that with. Because we're meant, I think, I think we're all meant to be with one another. And, and, if, and if we're doing without one another and we can't be with one another after we've accomplished the things we've done, then I, I think it's, it goes against what, what we were designed for. Right. And, and to add to that, I think um, what, what I have found works for other people and like I'm, I'm curious to see if if you tried this out was for me i recently learned like it's okay to um to have like hobbies where the goal yeah. isn't to like necessarily monetize or make a career which is very hard for me like like um recently a hobby i picked up was photography right because like, uh-huh. i was really into visual arts like like you know graffiti and and drawing before before I even made music, right? So photography, I always wanted to do photography, and then I picked up a camera, like like a film one, like a point and shoot. And from there on, I kept learning, kept learning. I'm like, this is fun, like the process and all that. And now I'm looking like, man, how can I monetize this? Because that's just how I'm wired. It's like I, I love like at least attempting to make career moves on things I love doing, right? <laughs> so to me, it's like hard to like want to do something that's not monetarily gonna benefit me later on one of the few things that is though is basketball because with basketball i never like had the intention of like oh i well me i never made a team so i knew like i'm not even (laughs) dedicating enough practice and time to get better at this i just do it because it's fun and it has a cool benefit of exercise um but i was like man like that's one of the main things i miss right now because the quarantine is going out to the the park and just playing basketball with my friends like because, yeah, man, it, there was not really a benefit besides the enjoyment of the actual sport and, and the health benefit of exercise. Of course, yeah. So I was like, man, like, so I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, other stuff that I'm into that, like, I just want to do it to, like, have fun and connect with people. Um, so I'm, like, thinking, like, should I get back into, like, I was so into gaming before, you know, like, I had, oh, I had a PlayStation, you know, I was so into games. But I sold my place. My, one of my biggest regrets, or it might be my biggest accom- accom- or sacrifices, <laughs> was I sold my PlayStation 3. And that's when I really started going more into music in high school. But I was like, oh, I miss playing my PlayStation and like, like talking with friends on the mic and just like. But man, I don't know. I'm thinking like. Give me this check, get you a new PS3. Nah, nah, man. That 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 went to bills mainly. <laughs> unfortunately, I, I know. I'm looking for the government to give more. They owe us low key, high key. But <laughs> hey, hey, wait. Are, are you doing a? Are you employed anywhere? No. So this is the crazy thing about uh, my situation right now. Like my internship, because I was at the Bay, right? I was interning mm. for uh, the audio plugging company, McDSP. Um, it ended in six months. Um, end of January. I decided not to, well, after two months, I was offered to extend it for a year. And sure. I knew then that my answer was no. And I, I told them, like, thanks, but sorry, like, I'm going to move back to L.A. It, it was it was not that there was anything wrong with the job. Like, the job was one of the best, like, and I'm super thankful and blessed to have that opportunity. It opened up a lot of doors. It was the best boss I ever had. It paid really well. Everything about it made sense. But for me, at, for at least in that specific time period, I knew, like, even with all this, I wasn't happy. Like, my soul, I, I always say the words to describe it, it was soul draining. Not because of them, because of me. It was just, I didn't feel right being there, you know? Yeah. Like, after, like, late September, I would literally take a bus from the Bay to L.A. every weekend and back up, which was kind of yeah. expensive. But that's how badly I wanted to work on my album at the time. And I wanted to just hang out with some friends because I didn't have too many friends up there. So I knew, like, the more I was out of L.A., the more I missed L.A. I didn't know that at the time, but, like, eventually I was like, oh, this is why I'm taking weekly Flixbus trips here. But um, I think, yeah, back in my head, I'm thinking, like, 
man, it would have been nice to get a consistent paycheck, and they probably would have had me work from home. Well, but I probably would have been, I, I, yeah. I bring that up because there's a, as of, I think yesterday? What's today, 29th? Yeah, as of yesterday, 28th. Yeah. If you are a independent contractor, you can file for unemployment, even though you're not employed by, like, a job. That 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 was news yesterday. That, well, it was it was actually news about uh two weeks ago, but it, it that application became open yesterday. No way for EDD. You should. Google, yes, so you need to Google that after this call. Look up um, uh, independent contractor unemployment. It's under UI, which stands for what UI stands for. Uh, I don't yeah. remember unemployment something. Okay. I'm working on the application right now. Actually, that's what I was doing before this. That's what I'm gonna do after this call. I uh, I'm going through my taxes and looking at my you know net income and all that and you have to answer a whole bunch of other questions before you get to the net income, but then right. you get to the net income and I'm still working on my taxes so right. I'm glad that, that, that. but Man. that is some relief so you should maybe check that out. Thanks, dude. Thank you for the information, Mark. Like I'm definitely gonna check it out. Um, I don't know if I'll qualify, but thanks for like sharing. Anyways, I'm definitely gonna give it a try because like I already did actually do my taxes got the refund and everything again that went to bills because like i haven't been employed since <laughs> february yeah. i still got to share my pay or the rent here at my parents place um yeah. but man this is some, something i'll definitely look into that definitely okay. might help because yeah. like i was thinking like like we said earlier about like the whole grocery thing like should i get a go i literally live right next to a grocery store like should i should i work there or am i putting my fam at risk like I, oh, I I, that that thing see. comes in my head. I'm like, is this the right thing to do? So I'm literally taking each day by day, to be honest. Um, yeah, look at it. do your thing, man. You you got You got to figure it out. You, no rush, especially okay. right now. There's there's no time like a pandemic to kind of take your time to think about stuff because you don't have to be anywhere in particular. Exactly. But thanks for bringing that up because like my um my fam and friends been bringing up like, yo, have you tried un unemployment? I was like. I technically cannot because like I was not fired like and I've been unemployed since before all this happened like I was like yeah. literally on the cusp you know like February right so yeah. I'll definitely check it out and look into it um, let's see yeah. if I could get certain things qualified but yeah that's that's definitely good information to know um, I'm definitely looking and hitting up a bunch of people oh that brings up another thing one of the great tips my friend gave me like two weeks ago right we got on the phone call, um, and he's like a actor right now. Um, shout, shout out to Chelly. I don't know if you know him. He he went to USC, class of twenty sixteen. Uh, he's a he's a also a artist, singer, songwriter, producer, engineer. But he's mainly an actor right now, and he's trying to do that to help like complement his music and vice versa. But uh, he's pretty deep in the industry, and he gave me a bunch of tips. He's like, I told him my situation. I was like, you know, I'm hitting up all these people. I have all these like connects I was th like thankfully able to get but like nothing is really rolling and he's like J James I think you're spending too much time on like a few people I think you should be going out there and like reaching out to more and he challenged me to literally uh, DM 50 artists every day I only did it for two days Holy crap! that's hard it's because it's not just random artists it's like I have to like like look in at their SoundCloud, their Spotify. I have to listen if I actually want to yeah, work with them, right? Study them, yeah. So that took a while for me. Um, well, I only did it for two days, a Friday and a Saturday. I think it was like two weeks ago. Literally, because of that. So that's what a hundred artists total, right? At least ten are like I really, really want to work with, and out of those ten, maybe three or four I'm talking with right now. Two of which, one is from Toronto. I never met this rapper artist. Got on an Instagram call and had like an hour plus long conversation, and now we're collaborating on stuff. And oh, the God. second guy is from South Africa. He's a producer from South Africa, and he loves hip hop. And like, dude, I'm working on stuff with him. So it's like, holy crap! Like, I'm speaking to people like I've never even seen across the world. Um, so I might, yeah. So all of last week, I was just working on a bunch of collabs. Though. It is, so I was like, okay, maybe I gotta start DMing a little bit more now, cause like, man, it's it's crazy, like, how many times a DM got me somewhere when I thought it wouldn't, <laughs> I was like, damn. So, Same. I'm gonna definitely try that out, on top of like, obviously other stuff, cause I feel like, right now, since a lot of things are up in the air, and a lot of things are not in control, it's like, I might as well shoot my shot, like, I have 
made some really, really valuable connections through my internship and, and their connects and all that. And I'm literally like, obviously I'm thankful for that, but I could get caught in like, man, like if only this person like finally hit the green button, like oh, my whole career would change. But that's no, like I, actually not no. the case. Yeah, I wanted to see how, if you could relate to that, because, like, right now, I'm just, like, I'll shoot my shot as many times, but I'm going to lay back and let them do their thing and not worry about it. I got a bunch of other stuff I could be doing, too, so, yeah. No, I, I've, I've gone to that same thing. I, I go, th I, I live that same thing every day, like, you know, especially, you know, we, we, you know, we went to a, a really dope school like USC that has so many resources. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I can say that I've, I've gained a lot out of it, even post-college. Like, I got a job pretty much right out of college, nice. um, working as a songwriting teacher out in Houston, nice. um, Houston, Texas. And it was similar to what you were talking about with, like, you know, the, the people were good, the job was fun, the pay was good, the blah, 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 but you just didn't feel at home there. Right. And, and so it was the same for me, so I, I came back, too, after about six months, but... Yeah, I commend uh, that, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's that's so relatable. Yeah, yeah. and so, you know, and uh, th there's there's moments where you kind of feel, like, angry, like, oh, man, like, I have all these connections. I went to U.S. You kind of list your own accomplishments, and you go, if, if only so-and-so, who has helped, insert friend here, could help me the way that they helped them, and, mm. you know, same graduating class, like, if only they would see how great I am or whatever... Mm. Like then my whole like I said my whole career would change and like exactly. everything would be amazing, and and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but it, it, like like your friend said, like you gotta start reaching out, which is exactly what happened to me. Um, I remember my I had a I have a mentor who told me the same thing. He said, "Hey man, it sounds like you send a lot of emails to people you know." And I said, "Yeah, I'm." I'm trying to get their attention again and remind them of what I do and he's like he said hey man he's like he's like we know you and that's why you reach out to people you know and like and because I know you I know what you're capable of mm. and if I need you I'll call you and I haven't called and and none of none of these people have called you because they don't need you right now right it's, right right but, but, but they know what you can do so don't worry about that he says he yeah. said, how often do you cold call mm. and I was like cold what <laughs> and then so and so I, know, I know what cold calling is but I I, know, I did not really do any cold calling at that time and so he was like he's like hey here's a guy dm him like he does this this is that why don't you talk about him like or like why don't you dm so and so and so why don't you email so and so and so and so and try to find their email and you know all this kind of thing and so since then that's definitely changed the way i approach things i haven't done a ton of that but the the, the stuff i have done has been fruitful um i've actually I, I've, I've just kind of been bouncing my time between those kinds of things and working on the stuff that I'm actually already creating for myself here. That's tight, man. And I, I wanted to go uh, also, I wanted to bring that up to you to transition is I wanted to know more if you can share about what you're working on. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to be necessarily your, your collaborations. It can like, um, but I also wanted to know because you, you've been working on your album, right? Um, I don't know if you yeah. want to share about that or if it's a low key thing, but it, just feel free to share anything yeah. that or any collabs you're doing right now too. Or yeah. So right now, my my biggest project is working on producing myself as an artist, and um, so the last time that I fully produced myself, meaning that no one else was like recording instruments with me and all that, because I've been doing collaborative projects for forever, like all right. high school, all college, right. live and recorded, always playing with other musicians. And that's what music is, you know, it's, it's a social thing. Right. Uh, but I haven't just written and recorded by myself since I was like 12, wow. when I got that, that old mixer thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, so actually a lot of these songs are co-written, about, about half of them, I think, um, that it's going to go on this thing that may end up being an album. Nice. Um, the original plan was an album, and then I was like, you know what? You know, we're in 2020. You can actually get a lot of bang for your buck off a single. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, like, it'll probably still be an album, just like not this year. Right. Uh, the plan was to put an album out this year. I haven't officially told anybody that that the album is isn't happening this year. I just told people, I'm telling people that there is a single coming mm -hmm. this year. 
Because, you know, anything can change. What if I end up deciding to put it together an album in here? I don't know. We'll and that's see. okay to share on the podcast? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Everything I said is greenlit. For sure. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, like, I- I've got a single that's coming out in summer. Um, it's called Morning Tea. Mm. And um, I think I've heard I'm about right- you uh, low-key uh, promoting that a little bit, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've been kind of doing just a little bit of stuff. Uh, there's some kind of more official kind of content I want to put together for that, but I've been putting putting together some like BTS stuff. That's good though, a little tease, you know. <laughs> yeah, and so basically, what I'm working on is, I wanted to have material that rep- that represents kind of the scope of all I can do in one piece. Hmm. So that way it shows me as a music producer as a you know string arranger as a multi-instrumentalist as a vocalist as a songwriter uh, as an artist as an aesthetician you know or whatever um everything that i can do kind of in one little piece being a song or a set of songs and so that's kind of what i'm working on right now nice. and it's been a lot of fun because i've been recording everything by myself the only other person who's touched this project because I had a friend come over once who was listening. He's like, what about this guitar part? And he played like uh, maybe a 15 second loop of chords on guitar and I tucked that in somewhere in the mix of the chorus. Nice. And uh, I have a co-executive producer, so our mutual friend Jaron Heidelberg. Hey, shout out to Jaron. Every couple weeks I send Jaron a balance and I go, what's it missing? I know it's missing something. Tell me what it's missing. And you're like, oh, you need, you know, you need a humbucker, on electric guitar split in stereo playing bar chords or something yeah. <laughs> and then phase one and then that'll be lit or and, he, and he'll say something like that i'll be like yeah yeah no that's what i was missing and then and then that one thing will inspire me to you know produce the next 30 seconds um uh, vertically like all the shakers all the whatever all the stuff and, and and then i can see it thanks for that one part or something so dude that's tight i feel like it's always good to have like that second ear that you trust yeah, and I, 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 I have a lot of friends who I love, and I have a lot of friends who are really good at music who I love, which kind of narrows that first thing down. Uh-huh. And then of those friends, a lot of those friends that I trust their ears, and then of those friends, there's like a, like maybe like only a handful of ears that I trust that I'd also trust specifically with like the stuff I'm working on. Mm. Um, like I, I believe a lot of of those friends do have good ears for music in a general sense, um, or have like good taste, whatever. But like, there's a very few people that I actually would trust to be like, you know, what does this beat or this song really need? What does it not need? And for me to know that they will be on my wave and simultaneously challenging my perception mm. of what this should be. Um, so that way, that there's always depth to it. It's not just what I say goes, but it's always someone who's like, okay, this is clearly your way of doing it. I wouldn't have thought of it this way, but I can see your vision, and I think the vision is missing X. And me go, oh, that's very interesting. I hadn't considered that kind Dude, of thing. That's tight, man. I feel like you're truly co- collaborative at heart, man. Like, like I, I'm the complete <laughs> opposite of you. Like, I started out just like always doing it my way the whole time, just because like I was a shy kid, and maybe part of it was ego. I always felt like no, no, that that, that was me, and and that's that's been me forever until I kind of realized that I learned a long time ago. I, I don't know if it's a hundred percent true, but I, I think it is that it tends to be as long as everyone you're working with you trust and like. I've heard that the more hands you get in a project, the deeper it becomes. Exactly. I mean, Let's talk about that. I we cut can, you off. We no, you get. Oh, uh, we could definitely uh, attest to that. I mean, I, my project that I'm most proud of till this day is uh, my album "Serve the Poor," just because, like, well, that one and "Pray for the Rich," which they were supposed to be one, but because of timing issue and school and all that, it became two projects. But like, I haven't had that many people involved. Oh shit! Drop my phone. It's all good. I haven't had <laughs> many people involved in one art piece ever before in my life. Cause like up until college, my junior year, like my freshman sophomore year, all of high school, like the only person I really, really, truly collaborated with was my cousin that makes music. Uh, shout out to Russell Groovy. <laughs> um, but like. It wasn't only until um, my junior year I reached out to people like like uh, Zach Z McD. Shout out to him. Yeah. Um, shout out to uh, my friend Brian Brian Hernandez. 
um, people like you, Mark, and a, a bunch of other friends um, that had a similar love and ear and people I could actually trust with, as you said, like narrowing those down. And to get those people involved in an album was like something I'd never done before, you know? Like having a co-production, having like actual instruments in the... <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying beats that don't have real instruments are horrible. I mean, come on, look at Jay Dilla stuff, man. That guy is like... <laughs> I'd put that above a lot of other stuff that might have already pretty instruments. Sure, yeah, pretty yeah. sure most of his stuff is... Well, actually, that's not entirely true. But he, he does have a lot of stuff that is all sample based. Yeah. He also and there's lots of footage online on even on YouTube that you can see of um him playing with musicians and, and him like he did a lot of tracking of his own uh, bass sounds with his uh, mini moog. Oh also, shit, no wonder it was so fat. I was like Yeah. How is so, he like is he like just chopping like yeah, no, kind no, of no, doing yeah. the low end thing with, with, with the yeah. EQ and like just chopping it or is he actually Stop playing a synth bass? I didn't know he had a moog. That's tight. He, he, he has a mini moog and that he would use uh there's also a famous picture of him with like an upright bass behind him and it has like one string on it and like tape markings because he said in interviews he's, he's like i'm not really a multi-instrumentalist he's like i just know how to get what i need uh. and so, so like he doesn't so that's why the string has that like one string on it and so you can like he's got the tape markings so like if i play here it'll give me the note i need and like i don't know He's like, I don't need to know how to do all this stuff. He's what like, a genius, man! <laughs> he's, got, he's got like Kareem Riggins on some stuff playing drums. He's got he's got, he's got Questlove playing. Uh, where is where is Quest? Hell yeah! I got I got Quest right here. This is probably my favorite. Wow, well, I I don't know. I can't. It's say hard that. to say that, man. Top ten. The F word with Jay Dilla, but um, uh, this is. Okay, how would I say? <laughs> this right. is probably my favorite official release mm. by Jay Dilla as an artist, because he's produced as a producer for a lot of people, um, and a lot of his beats, um, he has his instrumental versions on his artist page on on Spotify and all that. But he raps um, too and writes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as like an artist, uh, of of his released stuff, I'd probably be welcome to Detroit. Nice, um, nice. By J by Jay oh, Dilla. Uh, put it Dilla more, show it more to huh? the left so they can see it. Oh, like oh, this perfect. Here? Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. him smoking a joint, and I'm pretty sure that's a stripper in the background. <laughs> that's tight. And, uh, what a vibe. Yeah. And it's it's a very very well produced record. The beats are so good, and I know because uh, I, I watch a lot of interviews with him and Questlove that Questlove was talking about. Uh, um, playing drums on on this stuff and, and and doing crazy stuff like he was super experimental like had i think i think quest said he had had him like play drums like a, with like a uh, like a toilet roll i think he uh oh had a toilet roll on the snare drum to like mute the snare okay or he like used the toilet roll on the snare stick to give it like a softer attack or something like that it was something to do with the toilet roll on the snare drum what a smart guy <laughs> but um yeah just real real creative producer yeah love this guy Dude, I mean, one of, one of the biggest things I, I heard, I think it was from a documentary, but what I loved about Jay Dilla as an artist was he would, I, I think, I forgot which documentary, but he explained, or somebody explained, and you hear this on uh, Slum Village on, um, is it is it Climax? Um, the, I ain't playing hard to get, right? Is that Climax? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Climax, yeah. Dude, like, uh, uh, you get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. hearing that again, I was like, he's a producer even when he raps, like the rhythm he That's chooses true. to say That's his words true. in is an instrument in itself. And I was like, that changed, that forever changed how I would say. I wouldn't just like run through the words over the beat. I'll treat it like, like it's yeah. another instrument adding to the layers. So make it a rhythmic element. That's yeah. so tight, man. Like that. Yeah. What L a like shaker or like any other kind of percussion piece, like use it as a percussion piece, not just as a vehicle for the lyric, but it, let it be simultaneous. Let it be the. Vehicle for the lyric and a, a percussion instrument. Dude, he's so ahead of his time. I didn't even. I recently found out, or I probably found out about this before, but I was re, uh, reminded of this through a, a producer I follow, um, who's inspired by him. Um, the concept of like ghost kicks, you know. Um, yes, I know. To Crazy. create a bounce, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while well, since I've like done like more like boom bap stuff, and I was like, 
man, I might go at it again. I have a ton of records that you know I could just draw from and like, cause dude, I, I've been telling this to my uh, my producer friends. I was like, you guys have any drum kits you could send me? Cause like I've been using the same like trap drums for the past like four years. I'm getting tired <laughs> of them, you know. Like I'm trying to play with new sounds. Uh, but yeah, that's that's always good. He's constantly innovating, and I feel like I don't know if you're getting the sense. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have my ear to the the streets or <laughs> ear to the radio that much. I, I'm slowly. I'm always late on it. But I've, the sense I'm getting is at least the start of this decade. It seems like people are being more comfortable with the experimental side and doing things that are either um, tracing back to a different time era, as we see with the '80s influence in the Weekends album, Dua Lipa's album. Yep. And or things that are more like experimental. I mean, I think like, like the new Gambino, Gamb new Gambinos are out there. I still haven't listened to it. I'm late on it, man. Everyone's I, been saying I, I like checked out a couple tracks. I haven't like dug into it, but uh, I was doing a session with Brand Move. Shouts to Brand Move. We hey, shouts to Brand Move. Hey, you, you, been, you guys are collabing on something. I've, I've seen. Yeah, it. we're doing. I'm, I'm doing lots of virtual sessions from home as well. So like, I'm, I'm working That's on tight. my artist stuff, but yeah. I'm also I'm producing a couple artists uh, singles via Zoom. And um, some friends of mine, uh, Jessica Gerhardt, shout out to her, she's nice. awesome. Uh, Brianna Ibarra, also really awesome. Nice, nice. Um, and uh, Bran Move, he, he was. We're working on some new tracks. I don't know if it's gonna be for an album or just for singles, right. but he was working on a bundle of tracks with me. And um, oh, why did I bring up Brandon? Remind me what did I say about Brandon. Oh uh, shoot, what were we talking? Oh, we were talking about uh, time periods, Gambino. Uh... Oh yeah, he was he was telling about the new Gambino stuff, and we're listening to some stuff together to get some ideas before we we're recording something. Nice, nice. Yeah, man, I, I feel I feel the same about like my production. You know, like even though I had a sound for for the Serve the Poor album we worked on, um, I, I'm kind of doing something different. Like right now, um, the main project I'm working on with my cousin, um, we're doing a instrumental album, cause like that's one of the first things I put out, and I realized I've been putting them out every three years. I dropped the first one in 2014, which was my only was my first Spotify release, and then 2017. And then now 2020 and like we're making it like super like 80s you know? well not that super like there's still a modern <laughs> twist to it but like dude like i'm not using 808 like drum kits at all you know yeah. like <laughs> i'm doing like the phil collins drums like gated reverbs and sh you know like on one track not all track this other track i have it like a like a european like house like club type of sound like from a while from the 90s maybe like so it's gonna be interesting it's like is this even hip-hop james like i don't know you tell me <laughs> so it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what you call it yeah i mean hip-hop's always been like fluid and transforming you know but yeah man um before we uh start to wrap this up um is there anything else you want to bring up or we can move on to a question that we have um sure well uh, i want to actually go back circle back since we're talking about hip-hop right now you yes. had asked in the beginning i didn't answer your question about um, you know, do I plan to do any kind of hip hop stuff in the oh, future? Oh yeah, right, right. My right. hip hop influences. Right, right. So, like you know, I've got, I've always got my hands in in too many pots, and so <laughs> I will release a hip hop project someday. Nice, um, nice. That's I don't know year. when. That may be next year. That may be twenty years from now. <laughs> but I will. I mean, I've always been a big fan of hip hop, and and that's why when I was a kid, because my parents had a very eclectic um, listening spectrum. My mom was all um, all things pop, pretty much. So like, big into like, my mom's a Beatle maniac, so nice. I, we have a record from the Beatles. So like, we have so all Beatles, big on Michael Jackson, big on Justin Timberlake, nice. big on you know Stevie Wonder and and all those kind of people and. And then my dad was the one who was into everything else that was like left of center, like he's big into jazz, big into heavy metal, and uh, both of them like classical. Uh, they go see concerts, and um, so I'm really grateful that my parents are huge concert goers. I mean, right. granted, you can't go to shows right now, but um, <laughs> COVID-19 dating right. this video, but right, right. <laughs> uh, in case you're watching somewhere off in 3005. Uh, oh, uh, that'd be tight. <laughs> I know, that'd be, that'd be crazy. Someone I pick up the Leno podcast with Mark Pico. <laughs> like, Someone what? right now in 3005 is like, holy shit! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, but because they had such an eclectic... Oh, also my dad is into everything that's kind of more like funky and wacky, like all the Red Hot Chili Peppers and, nice, and nice. all that stuff. And, and uh, anyways, and so like 
I had a huge listening range. Oh, and my dad, I forgot to say, big into rap uh, as, as a kid. And so for me, it wasn't like, you know, like I think we, like, if you don't grow up with a certain style of music, you tend to tack it on to whatever culture makes it like, oh, rap, like that's African-American music and like, mm. oh, rock, like that's white people music right. and like, and, and, right, like that kind of thing, right? Right. And, but I, for me, I grew up with all of it. So nice. like, it's all part of what I do. Like even the hip hop stuff, absolutely makes its way into even this single I'm working on right now, Morning Tea. That's like, right. Like, even down to, of, of course, like, like the kick drum choices and the snare choices for sure, kind of between that hip-hop and R&B thing. Nice. But even down to the mix, like me and Jaren, Jaren's like, I want that kick to knock me. Hell yeah, and dude. It's, it's drums. It hit me. The and Jay so, Dilla method, I, you know. <laughs> exactly. And, and I, exactly. Dilla method is like kick, snare, level. You know, just yep, push. Yep. Just push it up, yeah, in your face. <laughs> and, and so, like, I thought the kick and the snare was fine, but he was like, you know, let's either double the kick or, like, let's, like, like put, put a compressor on yeah, it. Yeah, like, compress see, the see, hell see, out of that. <laughs> see how far you can take it before you don't like it. And we just bumped it and bumped it and bumped it. And I'm like, oh! And now when I listen to, to the, the pre-mix, even in here in the room, it's like, oh! Ooh. You feel it. It hits your chest, huh? <laughs> and the kick is pushing me back in my chair, and it feels right. That's and I can't tight. wait for that to get mastered, because it's going to be even bigger. Hell yeah, that's tight. That's tight. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. But yeah, you want to get to that question? What's the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> We got a question from shoutouts to Abraham underscore Trabajian. Abraham, um, I don't know if you've met him yet, but he's definitely been, uh, he's definitely heard about you because his question is, because he was on the Serve the Poor project. Um, okay. He did some vocals there and also plays keys. He's a, that's like his main oh. instrument, the keyboard. Wait, wait, um, is, is he a jazz keyboardist? Uh, he has a jazz and a classical background from UCLA. I don't know if. That rings a bell. He's like the only UCLA person I collaborated with. Yeah, I think it's Homie Bottom, but but um, cause I remember when we were tracking keyboard parts and organ parts, I want to say you're like, oh, like here's some key stuff that Abraham did, and then you're like, would you try something else? I, was that did that happen? Uh, I'm not sure if that's what happened. I yeah, think I, think I told you right. that him and Z McD added keys to an uh, outro on uh, on Pray for the Rich. And that's why I wanted you to do your outro on on Lord First, yeah, yeah, the yeah. organs, yeah. And I didn't okay. know anybody that had an organ besides you, so like a real organ. Shout out to that. It's the Hammond right back there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, this is this is the organ right here that we use on the record. Yeah, it's a it's a real like home model, not like a touring gig model, but like a home model. So it looks kind of like furniture, like it's got like a really you can't see it, but it's like nice and pretty down here. Um, it's uh, I think a T five hundred. From the 70, I think it's 72. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, it's um, got a lot of features and, and a built-in spinning speaker, kind of like like a yeah. Rolls Hammond. For those of you watching, uh, organs are one part is like the keyboard of the uh -huh. organ, and the other important part is this big box that no yep. one knows what it is if you, unless you're a musician. And it's it's a ro it's two rotating um, speakers, more uh, real right. kind of. But the, the speakers, especially the that's where you it mic creates, it, yeah. Yeah, and it creates a Doppler effect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, what, what was cool about that was because of that fact, and you did, I think you did multiple takes. When I mixed it in, bro, and this is like, I, I kid you not, 9.95% of the time when I showed that last part, or when they listened to the Lord first the whole way through, before I re released it, right, I would show it to my friends. And the or your organs come on. Cause I remember you had like extra parts too. Like I remember I had you play throughout, and you would go like, like run through the whole thing. But for some reason, I felt like, nah, it has to be like a complete like. I did not expect this, so I only kept the last part. But I think I took one and I panned it like literally hard left and one hard right. Mm -hmm. And I think the 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 synth bass um, that my cousin produced. And I had the fil the sample filtered, and I had my cousin do his vocals on it. It just felt like literally like you were transcending to like heaven. Like it was so yeah, wide I, and I like airy. The, the record, dude. Yeah, and for people that don't know, that don't know, that's literally I, I shout out Mark. I go, Mark Pico, <laughs> taking him to church, right? And then that's that has yeah. to do with the question because Abraham says, <laughs> in Lord First, you take him to church. How many times a year do you go to church? I was like, oh, okay. That's Love an that interesting question. question. So you can answer that first, and then I'll answer that. Yeah, yeah. I probably go to church more than 52 times a year. 
because wow. because I am the uh, music director at at my church. So actually, I probably go to church more than a hundred something times a year because I also play at another church. Like more, so, so you're there more than two three times I, a week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in a uh, in a pre COVID nineteen world, uh, I um, I would play at my morning church and at my evening church. Now my evening church is uh, shut down right now, so I don't go there anymore, unfortunately. Um, but I still go to my morning church, which is uh, FCC Pasadena Foothills Community Church, Pasadena. Very small church, and uh, I'm the music director there, and I got that that position uh in like early 2018 nice nice and, uh, it's been great i um i've always well, actually it's funny i've always led worship since college and i've always led at a whole bunch of random churches as kind of like a one-off like a sub and um i mean that's how i met you during uh, exactly. our larger like, meetings I, I at university yeah i wasn't even a christian when i came into college but i became a christian in college and, and we met there um and that's I, I didn't know jack shit about leading worship until college because our mutual friend Sean Halim shouts yeah, to shout him. Shout out to Sean, yeah. Shout, the the big small man, he does everything. He writes, produces, sings, songwrites, keyboards, all with incredible facility. Has played for thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and uh, Sean Sean's incredible. Yeah, shout He's out to Urbana. <laughs> exactly, Sean's an incredible guy. But uh, Sean kind of walked me through what it means to lead worship and mm. and it's not just singing it's not just doing music and and it's not just praising god but you're also like like what it means on a, on a very like practical level as, as you as the leader and the congregation like how do you get them involved in right. singing and how how do you make it a good time for everybody how right. do you make it meaningful to everybody right uh, and so I, I i've been i've been leading at, at fcc for uh uh, well, yeah, a little over two years now, and it's been fun. It's been fun to watch that that team grow. Because at first, it was me, the drummer, and the multi instrumentalist bassist. He'd play bass or, or 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 acoustic sometimes. And everyone's, you know, I don't think it was really professional. Everyone's like a hobby kind of musician. And then we've been kind of pulling out people from the congregation who wanted to sing but never had the courage to. And mm. That's been fun, That's cool. and then uh, and then kind of help beef it up by one of my good friends, Jack DeMeo. Shout out to him. Hey, shout out. Just, um, he he plays a uh, guitar there now with me every Sunday as of sometime last year. I remember, but and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I I go to answer your friend's question. I go to church a lot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for me, like I mean, just being like raised Catholic, like it's always been like definitely like mass, like a weekly thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's crazy because like. My mom is super into that, so, like, even now, because a lot of churches aren't, like, open, like, we would literally watch it on TV that my mom would record, and there's, like, the Philippines, like, Philippines are a huge Catholic country, so they would air their services online, too, or not online, on the TV, and I was like, man, this is interesting, like, sometimes I got a mask on, and I was like, oh, wow, it's still, everything's happening, the only thing that's different is, like, obviously, like, like physically receiving communion but like i was like man this, yeah. this is pretty interesting man but i mean that that's that's my <laughs> answer too you know like <clears throat> church has a huge role for not only us but a lot of musicians like whether or oh not my- it's a good or bad experience i think objectively the music can be definitely uh, uh a benefit whether it's a healing purpose whether it's a uh another skill acquirement purpose but I, or whether it's a communication to a higher being like I feel like it's always been, I, I, I've always seen more, I guess, the positive light now, because I've visited a ton of different churches too, like in college, I would visit my friends' churches, because I was just open to it, you know, um, but yeah, man, it's there's a lot of beautiful stuff even on the big ones, but even the small ones, even the very intimate small ones, are, there's something peaceful about it, I feel. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah, it's it's actually incredible, the, the, the impact of the church in, in terms of music I and mean, of course in history but but just in, in american music history like so many of like the greatest session musicians um that that came together during like a lot of the recording sessions of like the 60s and even the 70s and even till now like 
so many of them like grew up in the church and and, and like did you know the church band until they kind of got their touring legs ready and all that kind of thing and and I think that the big reason for that and I've I've even watched a couple of videos on on why so many great musicians you meet or all have the same thing come down like oh yeah I started playing in church right. like why like the thing that can have collisions and it's and it's mainly because it's you know hopefully if it's a if it's a good church if it's a church that actually follows you know some <laughs> things um it's the church is and is supposed to be uh first of all misconception church is not a building it's a community exactly uh, but it's supposed to be a community of people that love you regardless of your faults so regardless you can play an a flat when it should have been an a you know uh you know re- that give you the opportunity to grow and and be wrong in front of everyone while you learn the ways of like you know what is good and, and what is true and, and, it's, and it's and even then it's not bad to be wrong it's 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 more that it's it's more so that it's good to know where you are, who you are, and and, and where you, and who you where you want to be, who you want to be. Right, right, right. You know what, what are the things you're doing today that 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 made me feel good today, but you know are actually hurting you in the long run, or kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. Anyways, but all that to say, a lot of the musicians I think have that church thing in common because they had the freedom in their churches to like start learning and watch the bands. Especially if they were raised at church, they, you got this, you know, it's like a language. You know, you grow up, you speak English and your parents speak English, whatever language, you just learn it. You don't, you don't even mean to learn it. You just kind of end up, it just kind of starts coming to you. Um, and then you go to school and you start to kind of learn why certain words mean this and how right, it is right. spelled. You, you pick it up. So, like, I, spend, I think you just spend that time around those musicians. You start playing wrong notes and then people don't chastise you for it <laughs> until you learn the right notes. Right, right, and, right. right. I think that's what kind of has made so many church musicians like, you know, up, you know. Man, now to think about it, that makes sense. Because I've been wondering at that too. I'm like, damn, all these people we watch in these documentaries, like they all grew up in church. I know. <laughs> so many. It doesn't even matter. It didn't even have to be session musicians. So many rappers. Kanye, and, uh, yeah, Kendrick, so many. Uh, who else? There's a lot. Oh, I and think Snoop Dogg. Just, Snoop Dogg grew up, was in a choir too, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Um, and it spreads across like genres. Like it's it's all over rap. It's all over country. It's it's certainly it definitely to its degrees in pop. Um, in K-pop too, some of the the uh, singers there, they first started singing in church. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because Korea is a predominantly Christian country. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very Christian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's that's interesting, man. Um, I think uh, we're, we're going to wrap this up soon. I wanted to ask one last thing. This is coming from me, and it's sure, on a s- similar topic, um, the importance of community, right? Um, yeah. My question is, do you feel like one of your goals as an artist is to build your own? And I don't mean like a church, like what, what Kanye tried to do or, or what people <laughs> accuse him of doing. I don't mean like some cult shit. I mean like, you know, like, it's a place where we can, you know, express our ideas and, and relate and, 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 and meet up. And, and yeah, it's that gathering spot, that, that support group, right? Because, um, you know, I, I'm in a, bu- a bunch of different communities, you know, uh, Christian community, uh, artist, musicians type of stuff. Uh, maybe people I go to for basketball, maybe people I go to for photography, right? Um do you feel like one of your goals as an artist is to eventually have your own? Is that something you're trying to build? And then the follow-up question is, um, regardless of your answer to the first one, do you feel like your involvement in other communities are always beneficial somewhat to your music? I, I was going to ask that, yeah. Okay, so, so in answer to the first question, uh, well... One thing I know is that you know a community is made of um, people who all have common relationships with one another. Okay. And usually, you know, I or are, are at least people who you know share things, whether it's resources mm-hmm. or relationships. Like you can say, like I, I live in Arcadia, so right now, so like 
you could say we're a community, even right. if I don't know everybody, but we share resources, we share the same streets, we share right, the same right. roads, the same air, the same, you know, shops, the same uh, city regulations, all those things. Right. There's also, uh, you know, relational communities like, um, like InterVarsity, like you and I went to InterVarsity. Right, right. And, you know, we come together to hang out with one another, to talk about God, study the Bible, all this kind of stuff. Right, right, right. So, for me, I, I think I see the word community as like, um, I see it more like the, like the relationship, uh, relationships. So for me, I feel like in a sense I already have made, and we all are constantly making and deciding what our community is mm. by making those choices of like, am I gonna work myself to death for the next fifteen years, or am I gonna go get that beer with so and so? Like mm. I think those are the choices that actually build community, because you know you, the more you let you, I think, or at least the more I let myself allow myself to tie myself to people and to events with people that I like and uh, and to events with things that I like doing, the more I actually find, oh yeah, you went to that thing too, and oh yeah, hey, we want to go to this thing together, and the more you kind of find a group that maybe isn't as stuck together as like a, a group of friends in high school, where you're all physically always together, but more like you find a group that you're only a phone call away from a warm hello, or you're only a message away from like, dude, I'm free tonight, let's go. Like, you know, it's that to me is community. And though I know there are more tangible, physical ways to create community, like, I've, like again, my friend Jessica Gerhardt, who I'm working on her music, um, she makes very, very real, very physical communities. Oh, wow, and that's she, tight. She's a big organizer of, of events. She loves putting together events. She puts together... Um, mini festivals and shows all the time where she books friends of hers and everyone comes together mm -hmm. and she opens up her again in a pre-COVID-19 world she opens up her apartment once a month for a thing called uh, Friday at the Fox Den and um, <laughs> okay. it's, it's like a home style show in an apartment and so she packs like 50 people into her apartment and there's no mics, not 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 one di for a, a keyboard, nothing. Everything has to be acoustic. That's like, tight. Keyboard, keyboard speakers, vocals, guitar, no mic, nothing. And it's all about like the intimacy and the fun of it all. And she puts out these things called love bags. So at the end of the night, you can be like, oh, you know, so and so, Mark Pico, you're my favorite artist or whatever, and put that in the love bag. Or like say, affirmation. I really That's tight. Man. Or, like, man, I really hated this lyric. Or you can put <laughs> it in the love bag. And uh, she has like email lists. She even does this thing called the Wayfarers, because um, we um, started reading this book called The Artist's Way together. You probably heard of that book. You I heard the Artist. So it's it's a kind of like a meditation, uh, twelve step process okay. type book, um, where it's about either recovering or rekindling mm. or refocusing your inner artist. Mm. And uh, it's called the Artist Way, and I think every artist should should check it out at least once. It's it's worth doing. I have the book. You can get it for like twelve dollars on Amazon or whatever you buy books. Um, and it's like you can do it in twelve weeks, or we did it I think in twice the time or three times the time to take more time with it. But she again in a pre COVID nineteen world had people over I think once a month or once every two months, where they would all just kind of say, Hey, where are you at in the book? What it's, do you like, it's like a little book club. Oh, Exactly, but specifically, less focus on the book, more focus on the community, more on how are we right. doing, and and also how can we all help each other? So and so is a photographer, so and so is a whatever, and like maybe they need a picture for their album cover, and then that's tight, all man. that kind of like that's a very physical, I think, example of community. So as far as that, I would hope to maybe create something like that someday, but I, I, I think I want it to be a little more unorthodox. I, I don't necessarily see myself being like the head of like an artist way group. Right, I see myself right. doing something more like um, taking out, I don't know, a group of 20, 30 musician friends to a bar and going going playing pool like once once a month. And we all go to like have pool night once a month because I love playing billiards. Nice. You can and, do tricks on there too? No, I'm playing. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm working on them, but I'm, I'm actually pretty good though. That's uh, tight. That's tight. I, I actually, I do that already, but with a very small group. Wait, um, sorry to interject. What do you think of Eight Ball, the game? I used to play that heavy on the phone. The Eight Ball. <laughs> I think I've played it once. It, it's a good time, but I I love the real thing. <laughs> nice, no, okay. But That's um, yeah. But yeah, like I do that already with a really small group of guys, and like I would like to, 
maybe open that up or something like that in the future. I, I again, it kind of goes with my philosophy in that there is there is the divine in everything outside of like the obvious. I agree. I so agree. Instead of like, okay, book on healing your inner artist, very spiritual, right? How about like going and play in the pool and having a beer with your friends? Yeah. Like, I think, I think there's divine in that too. I and agree, like, man. also being intentional about it, like exactly. not just going playing and shooting this shit for nothing, but exactly. checking up on people, like really talking with them, how you doing, what's going on, or, or um, just you know whatever, as long as you make it meaningful. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Man, that that was a dope answer, dude. Like, I, I really love uh, both uh, you, where where you're at with it and and saying how like, yeah. what's that? I so said, tell me about you were gonna tell me. I think your perspective on it. No, I I I, I didn't really have a clear one. So, dude, oh, okay. literally, <laughs> I had I wanted to ask you this question and. Because like literally last night, no joke, I looked up a TED talk. <laughs> I was like, I literally put on YouTube how to build a community because like that is one of my goals in mind, and I do like how you answered it, um, how you're doing it, and how your friend is doing it on a more like tangible way, whereas yours is more like on a constant relationship basis. Um, yeah, I I, I, I love both of those answers. Yeah, yeah. I think for Jessica, the way she builds community is very. Um, space based and mine's very time based mm. so mine is so mine is time based so i'm how often am i keeping up with people whether we're in the same room or not um and like you know what are we doing or it, it, you know are we i like to mix it up you know if, if we're always in the studio working it's like when are we ever going to relax and go to the bar or if like we're always exactly. hanging out at the bar when are we ever going to get serious and get creative together exactly. right so like i'm always trying what are those balances with those people and how do I bring them together more often, all this kind of thing. And then Jess has got the space approach where it's like, okay, here's a big Zoom link. We're all going to watch uh, the Talking Heads live show, uh, that, that famous live con- uh, dance like you don't mean it. I, I forget the name of the show. Some big live show they did. Um, like we're all going to like hop on Zoom and watch this show together. Or we're all going to get in my apartment and do this show. We're all gonna get in my apartment and talk about the artist way. Like that's a very like space oriented kind of approach. Dude, I, I it's it's a, I, actually now now thinking about it, I I do know how I tried it in my attempts, and I do resonate with your way more, because like I feel like that's always um the best way to do it, which is to like see like who are my artists, musician friends, collaborators, where I we just want to get together and finally just do something that's not work related. And yeah. how about the people like I do f around with all the time, but maybe we f around too much, and yeah, we're not exactly. doing anything productive, and we're kind of wasting time. I'm like, how do I balance that? So there's but, so much potential there, yeah. Exactly, but I I did try, and maybe this is giving me encouragement to try a bit more of how your friend Jessica is doing it, because um, I remember back in my senior year in college, I hosted like maybe one or two game nights, and like that was scary because like, I'm usually not the event creator, you know. What I mean, oh, like I, I I get kind of like intimidated. Scary. Yeah, yeah, but that that definitely gets me thinking of like, hmm, like, I'm gonna try to just be more involved and dive deep more in the ones I'm part of, and the ones I want to get into. But eventually, uh, definitely like try out some of the more on let me plan this type of thing and see who's down. Um, but yeah, that's that's a great answer, dude. I'm I'm glad you answered it that way. That thank you. I never thought about it that way, but this that definitely got me thinking, for sure. Um, yeah, Mark, is there any uh, last things you want to say? Or um, We're already like at an hour and a half, so I think it was a good time. Oh, that's to, crazy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good time yep. to end it. But uh, plug anything you want to plug. Definitely uh, send me the links because the full version is going on YouTube. A little promo, one-minute teaser is going to go on Instagram. Sure. I'll tag you and everything. But anything you want to shout out, just send me an email of it and a square photo of you that I could use for the cover. But if you want to shout out to anything uh, that you're working on or – people you want to shout out in general just let them know right now yeah um things to shout out my name is mark pico i am a uh you know i'm a song no <laughs> you don't know i'm a i'm a songwriter artist multi-instrumentalist multi-instrument, uh, producer uh luthier and teacher um so if you need help with any of those things uh if you have a guitar that needs help repairing i'll fix that for you or you want to get it to play better if you have music that you want to become realized. I've been doing a lot of production lately and I love it. Um, just DM me anywhere you can find me. You can go to my website, markpico.com. You can hit me on Instagram, markpico music. 
same for Facebook, Mark Pico Music, or check me out on YouTube, Mark Pico Music. Um, yeah, I, I'd be happy to help you produce, you know, whatever you're working on. Um, I just, you know, send you some example stuff I've been doing. I'm also, um, like I said, multi-instrumentalist. If you have music you're already working on and you want live guitar, live drums, live organ, keys, uh, vocals, banjo, didgeridoo. <laughs> didgeridoo, acoustic piano, uh, mandolin, the shakers, baglamas, uh, almost anything you can imagine, I can play it for you and send it to you. So yeah, or if you just want to write write some songs, I write a lot of music and uh, try to release it with other artists and all that kind of stuff. So then know if you want to write. So that's me. That's tight. Thank you so much, Mark, for being a guest on episode nine of Lano hey, Pod, the Lano Honor. Pod podcast. My pleasure. And yeah, ending this season on a good note. The second season will be uh, up for May. I'm constantly looking for new guests, so. Feel free to hop on again if you have new stuff you want to share or if you want to refer me to other people you feel like. You know, I've literally had one of my f friends who I've never hung out with. He was a mutual friend of one of my friends. He does photography, and we just got to know each other more through this podcast, which was super dope. Mm -hmm. Shared some really cool stories. And, yeah, I, I appreciate everything that you shared here. Um, I'll definitely keep you updated. But, again, thank you guys for watching. This is, again, Lano Pod, the Lano Pod podcast, episode 9, featuring Mark Pico. Thank you. Thank you, James. I'm so honored to have been here. For sure.